Hey everyone, this is Pamela Coey and I'm in my studio. And again, this is a time-lapse part three of my acrylic mixed media painting. And it's currently a diptych. It's four feet by six feet. And as I promised you, this painting is gonna take a pretty big turn right now as I'm transitioning into some stripes. And I'm putting the stripes on right now with this really bright green, almost fluorescent tape. It's, um, it's kind of annoying how bright it is, but um, notice how I'm putting it on and it's, it's definitely a pattern that I'm putting on top of something that had no pattern. So I often like to uh, switch back and forth between something that has a lot of chaos and you know, kind of free form with structure. And so right now I'm adding that structure and I'm trying to make sure that the stripes are all parallel to one another. And if you see a little white piece of paper um, as I was putting on those stripes that was my gauge to make sure that the stripes were all you know the right distance apart because right now I kind of want them to be that way and then um, with this newsprint I'm making a template where I just marked where those stripes were and I mark on the right panel uh, in three positions where those stripes go so again it's just my way of making sure the stripes are all parallel they're all the equal width apart and so this part is fairly uh just takes time and you know it's time lapse again but this took me a long time and here i'm using a brayer to make sure the tape is really uh you know adhered because if you don't burnish the edges with something like a brayer or your hand then sometimes you know the the paint can seep underneath the edges and now I'm just adding some very bright, this is about as bright cadmium red as you can get. I have not desaturated this with anything. I'm putting it on with a brush. But then I'm also taking it off with a paper towel. So I put it on, I take it off, and it's really just so much fun to add a, you know, layer upon layer. So the underpainting of this is house paint, as you saw in part one and part two. In part two, I started to add collage material that I had made or bought, and I showed, showed you how I made my own collage paper with acrylic on parchment paper. I still have that parchment paper with acrylic, so I can at any point add more. And here's a close-up of those stripes with the paint on it. And then I start to take the stripes off. So the paint doesn't really have to be dry. I might have let it dry by the time I finished, you know, the right side, it probably was fairly dry, but now I take the stripes off and the tape is actually still pretty sticky. So sometimes I'll just hang that to the right or left of the panels and, and reuse it again. I think I do that later. It can be used for other things as well. Maybe you need to tape some plastic underneath your panel to keep it from dripping onto the walls or whatever. So the tape can be reused. It's just really nice to get the green tape off the painting. What I find to be really helpful is whenever you have an underpainting, you know, sometimes you fall in love with certain areas, but in this case that would have been too soon to fall in love with anything. So when you then impose structure upon chaos, which is what that initial house paint layer was, it's not random. It's actually a pattern that is going to cover up areas that you might have loved, but because it's a pattern, you don't think so much about losing something. You just realize that you're adding a pattern on top of something that had no pattern, and whatever you lose, you lose. It's not something that you're going to worry about. I did try to vary the opacity of the red paint. Notice how some areas it's thick and some areas it's thinner. And that's because when the striped tape was on there, I took a paper towel and I was able to lift some of that paint. Then when I took the tape off, you can really see that difference in opacity. You can also see how glossy the surface of this painting is because it is acrylic. And here's a little bit different view. Again, I'm going to move back into collage paper now. So I started with house paint, moved into some collage, added some stripes, and now I'm going back to collage paper again. 
and I'm using all different kinds of papers again and what I'm doing right there it's very thick cardstock so I had to really uh, there I'm getting my golden acrylic gloss gel open because I needed to have something that had some substance so that's a pretty pretty good uh, product to use when you're trying to adhere collage paper that's really thick and I think I mentioned that in the other video when you do thicker papers you need a little bit stronger adhesion and the acrylic gloss gel will do that thinner papers you could use acrylic polymer medium which is more liquid but I'm pretty much just using that gloss gel throughout the whole piece here because it works fine for both thin and thick paper I really love to be able to stand back and just see the distribution of color and pattern and papers and it's not I'm still pretty random in putting these papers on I'm not really thinking too hard yet but I'm just trying to look sort of out of the corner of my eye or to stand back and see you know what is the distribution of darks and what is the distribution of these very saturated colors what is the distribution of low set colors you know what is the distribution of when I start to add these darks they're they're really gonna jump out because everything I have right now is pretty mid-tone with a little bit of highlight from the cardstock papers So if you're enjoying this content, you know, I hope that you'll like the video and I always appreciate your comments and I try to get to them. Um, so many of you have commented and I really appreciate it. It's fun to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so that you're always notified when I post a new video. There's some collage paper that I, I made. You can see when I'm putting on the, uh, the gel that it's becoming pretty transparent, but I just used some acrylic on top of white rice paper. And you can find all different kinds of thicknesses and it's just really fun to have a variety of papers with different amounts of opacity and thickness for times like this. You'll notice that for my collage papers, I like to have a really large cutting mat and then I have a yardstick, and I'm really just using an X-Acto knife, and the cutting mat is probably close to 22 by 30 inches. They come in all different sizes, but, and when I travel to workshops, I carry a small one with me. They're always handy. And then I like to have a sharp blade. Uh, so I do have an X-Acto knife, and sometimes I cut the paper, and other times I tear it, like I just did there. That's actually just some black tissue paper. I also have some acid-free, it's kind of a, a beige color of tissue paper. Sometimes I use that. And then you can still see some of the papers that I made with the parchment paper and the acrylic house paint on it. I still have that and I'm gonna be using that again. There's more handmade paper, handmade collage paper. When I made this video, I actually had two cameras going. Um, the view you're seeing right now is actually from my iPhone on a tripod and uh, the other footage that came from the main camera is having some problems with it, I'm noticing. So tomorrow, 
I'll be doing some tests with uh, that camera to see what's going on with it because when I tried to edit that footage, um, it kind of shut down my software and that tells me that something isn't right either with the camera or with the disc, the SD card in there. So it's always challenging, you know, it's really fun. I love documenting what I'm doing and, and then sharing it with you. I enjoy the process very much. And it's also very helpful to me to kind of remember what I did. But at the same time, I'm always battling with technology. And as anyone knows who's worked with computers and software and all the things that you need to be able to create a video like this, things can happen. And it's, uh, it's, it was nice that I had two cameras set up because it, then I was able to you know, show you this video. But if I hadn't had two cameras set up, I, went to, I would have lost this footage. So um, this would be called the B-roll, which just means it's kind of a, an additional view. It wasn't the main view, but it was more of a side view. And um, usually the B-roll is considered to be extra footage that you can pull from to give you a different view. Uh, but it's to make it more interesting, usually you're going to have one main kind of straight on vantage point and then the other one, which is this one, the 45 degree angle. But again, it's uh, what I liked about this angle was it showed my cutting table and the other one didn't show that. So pros and cons to, to both different viewpoints, I guess. Now, once I put the collage paper I, on, I, I also will coat that with more of that gel the gloss gel because I want to make sure that you know if there's a part that didn't get the gel on the underside then I'm locking it in on the surface and also then everything you know the paper sometimes if, if it has something that was more of a maybe a pencil on it or something that smears it also locks in that mark making So I'm hoping that I'll be able to finish this painting fairly soon. It's actually quite, quite beyond what you're seeing right now. And I think in part four, uh, that will probably be the final part of this series. So again, if, you, um, if you're enjoying this content, please let me know if you'd like to see part four. And uh, you can just post your remarks in the comment below or if you have any questions. I have a form where you can always um, post a question that you'd like me to answer in YouTube. And I will start to try and have more just Q&A sessions so I can answer questions because they're starting to really build up now. And I was kind of waiting for that to happen so that I can kind of categorize the questions you're asking. Sometimes they're technical and sometimes they're, you know, having to do with design or aesthetics. And uh, so just to let you know that's coming. I look forward to it. It'll be really fun. In fact, what I'll do is I'll make sure that in the, there's a uh, description area below this video and below every video. And in that description section, I usually have a lot of links to things like, you know, my favorite supplies, which is to be found at artandsuccess.com slash resources but for questions that you might have that you'd like me to answer then I will have a link to uh, it's basically like a Q&A form where you can submit your question and what happens is they all go into one place so I can easily find them so when I have maybe 15-20 minutes and I can just uh, set up the call and um, I'll be answering questions and it might be a YouTube live so I can even answer questions that you ask during the live call. I think that would be a lot of fun. I also, after I put the collage paper on again, just like I did in the other part two video, you'll notice that I take some parchment paper, or again, it could be wax paper, but I put something over the surface of the collage material, and then I just either use my hand or a brayer, and I just kind of rub over the entire surface to make sure that I didn't miss an edge or a corner.
Here I'm using that acid-free brown tissue paper. It's pretty transparent. A lot of people talk about how much they love to layer their paintings and you know the stripes were really just another layer and uh, the stripes allowed me to not worry about the underpainting and now that I'm putting the collage paper on it's another layer and it, it makes me not worry about the stripes. I didn't really want the stripes to be overwhelmingly strong so now I'm, I'm basically putting on this collage paper randomly and it's obliterating a lot of the stripes. And so that way I can selectively keep, you know, certain areas that will peek through to the end, but a lot of it's just going to disappear. There are some book pages. A lot of times, uh, I'm sure a lot of you do this as well, but you collect older books. And I was teaching down in Mexico last year in San Miguel de Allende. And one day we went to a wonderful cafe that happened to have a big book sale uh, in part of, the, part of the building. And so I collected quite a few books and brought them home and for the purpose of tearing out the pages. That's what I was doing there. And there's some of that parchment paper with the acrylic that I showed you, the acrylic house paint. Sometimes, you know, I was tearing it. Other times I was cutting shapes. There I'm cutting strips that actually are about the same width as the stripes that I made with the tape. So with this again, you put the paint side down against the golden gloss gel which is what I'm using or whatever you're using you can put the paint side down let it dry you gotta let it dry pretty well and then you just peel the parchment paper away and that leaves the paint behind sometimes the uh, paint that's left behind gets these little air bubbles underneath it so 
what I was doing right there was with my gloved hand, uh, just rubbing that out. So I hope you enjoyed that everyone. And again, if you want to see part four, the last part, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.